hope y'all are doing okay and trying to stay sane <laughs> because it is day 48 of quarantine and I kind of think I'm getting a little bit crazy. Um, for example, yesterday I made four loaves of bread. I said four loaves of bread. Like, who does that? Who, who just sits down and just makes four loaves of bread for no reason? Um, I also, surprisingly, have been able to somehow keep the one plant that I am trying to grow, which is a lemon tree, I've managed to keep it alive. I'm impressed with myself. Also, I watched Pinsent Tailoring's newest video about how he judges the historical costuming community for wearing loungewear or sweatpants and pajamas every day, 24-7, 48 days of quarantine. And I'm, I'm kind of just like, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I would wear my, you know, 18... 90s tea gown, but I haven't really been finding the motivation to finish that project. And I judge you for it. Today, we have finally finished the 18th century pair of stays that I have been working on for a very long time. Um, but in my last video that I posted on this project was how I did all of the embroidery for the stomacher and the shoulders. However, the ensemble is not finished yet. It's just the stays that are finished right now. And I'm very excited because it's taken, like I said, a little while to do. Um, but the materials that I used were the same blue cotton that I had in that other video. And it kind of turned out to be a little bit more tie-dye looking than I had hoped it would look like, but um, it's okay. And I also used unbleached muslin for the lining and I also use medium weight interfacing to go in between the two layers at least to give a little bit of structure to the stomacher the bones which were zip ties they worked really well uh, it was kind of like an experiment for me because I've never used zip ties on any of my projects before but <laughs> I think I'm gonna embrace that new practice into my life. Because it's the same durability and feel as regular synthetic baleen, which would be the regular boning, but it's also narrower, which is something that I actually really like. And that's something that you see in extant stays. Um, in museums and uh, stays that have a lot of boning channels, you see that they have really narrow bones and hundreds of them, you know, just whole, just I want to film a really nice cinematic, um, really aesthetic video showcasing the stays on me. So it can actually be like a little bit more like, wow, that's a finished product. But I still hope that y'all enjoy and learn something and I'll have a link below to my blog if you want a more detailed description of how I made my stays. But let's just jump into the video, shall we? So over here, um, this is my actual pattern that I had made and this is what I had sort of come up with so if you're making your own then and you're you're good at kind of um, drafting and copying designs I guess um, this is kind of what I have so it's just the shape um, so this is the stomacher here and there's that and then this is how uh, the actual draft looks and uh, the back seam here is going to be eyelets but I just needed it to work for me to put on. So we're going to start cutting now.
Now that all the pattern pieces have been sewn together with the lining interfacing and cotton layers, it's time to actually start working on making the boning channels. And there are a lot of boning channels, 154 to be exact. So enjoy this because it's going to be a really long process. Before you begin making your boning channels, it's really important for you to decide which method you're going to use. Are you going to make the boning channels with the sewing machine, or would you rather make them by hand? For my stays, I ended up doing both methods. If you decide to use your sewing machine, make sure that you measure the width of your bones first. Here I am measuring the width of my bones according to where the needle and the edge of my foot is positioned. The bones or zip ties that I ended up using were each about a quarter inch wide, but you still want to measure just to make sure that it's nice and tight. Just now you might have noticed that the bottom edge of the bone was cut at an angle. And this makes it easier to actually insert into the boning channel that you just made. When you're satisfied and happy with the fit of the bone and it fits snugly, take the bone out and then keep sewing the channels. But save the tabs for last if you're drafting your own pattern. And this is because you want to make sure that both sides of the pattern pieces are perfectly mirrored. This was my favorite part, cleaning up the tails of the threads. But make sure you tidy them up and cut them down, unlike what I did here. Here now I have four panels sort of finished as far as having the boning channels in, the boning in, and... I'm really, really liking how it's looking. I'm very excited. The only thing is, is that I don't exactly like how my tabs turned out, but I think it'll be okay. It'll be fine. But now I'm going to show you how to do the hand stitching of these panels here at the front. So this is the front seam here. And they're going to be eyelets here down the middle. And for these two front panels, I hand stitched all of the boning channels, but for the rest, I machine sewed them. But for consistency purpose, I want to hand stitch these here. So if you want to hand stitch your panels and you want to make sure that your boning channels are straight and uh, not at all at weird angles and things like that, I'll show you how I did these. Take your bone and align it to where it will be inserted in between the interfacing and cotton layer. Again, cut the bone at the correct angle where other bones or the bottom edge of the pattern piece is intersected. With two fingers, smash the bone in between the two fabrics so that it kind of makes a tight channel for you to sew. Then pin the channel down so that your hands may be free while you're sewing. Sew the bone in place with small running back stitches. And don't lose your mind because this is going to take a long time. just finished oops there goes my computer i need to get back to work <laughs> oh dear everything's going off <laughs> but i finished the front two pieces of my uh the stays here like the front closure bits these two are the only pieces that are hand stitched and the rest are done by machine because i was really lazy and when i first made this one i was like uh, -uh this is taking way too long but for consistency's sake i just did the other side here 
But now I'm trying to figure out if I want the boning channels on this next piece. It's the second to last piece of the stays, or as far as the uh, pattern. If, if I want the boning channels to be going at the same or uh, similar direction, so exact opposite of the direction these are going, I'll be going at the same angle but on this pattern here. I don't have any lines sketched out yet, but I'm thinking I'm going to take a ruler oops, <laughs> like this, and make a straight line like this and make the boning channels going off of this first line. And that's exactly what I did. I took my ruler, I made a straight angle, and I mirrored that same angle onto the opposite pattern piece as well. So here's a tip when you're making your boning channels, because this angle is matching up perfectly with the tabs, just go ahead and make those lines going straight down through the tabs. And when you're inserting your boning channels, don't cut them, make them nice and long. Look at this, I'm so excited. I have just finished sewing in all the boning channels and putting in all the boning for these stays. And I'm so excited at how it looks. Like, it looks so good. So now I'm just going to sew together each piece together by hand, lining up the red threads here on every side. And hopefully it will turn out well. Like, oh, I'm so hopeful. I think it'll turn out fine. I think it'll be fine. I've left a little space here for the eyelets and here for the eyelets. So I think it'll be great. I'm really, really, really excited. So, and then the next thing to do after I've finished sewing these pieces together, so this side together and this side together, the next thing that I will need to do is put some boning into the stomacher which is that. So I'll just put some bones just to give it some support. And I think I'll do it by hand because it'll be a front feature. And then this would be the uh, uh, shoulder straps. So um, this is the top here. Originally, I had designed it so that this piece, the bottom edge of the uh, sleeves or like the shoulder piece would be able to be stitched to the top of this but I kind of you know kind of thinking maybe I would like these to be detachable and then I could also make another stomacher that would just be a plain stomacher so the same as this without any embroidery on it in case I ever wanted to wear it again but I don't know I really like how it's looking Well, hello world. So here's a little disclaimer. I haven't really messed with my stays um, in weeks. It's May now. Um, and I think 
the last thing that I did <laughs> for my stays was sewing together all of the different pieces and felling them down and that took forever. Like I'm not gonna lie, that took forever because most of the stays is all done by hand. The only thing that I've done that is technically, I guess, cheating is using my sewing machine to make the actual boning channels. I have been dreading the, the idea of doing the binding by hand because when I hand stitch or hand sew seam, I do really tiny stitches, but they're really strong. I just naturally do that and I'm like, oh, there's not a whole lot of force going on the binding. It's just there to finish the edge and I know it's gonna take me forever to do. I've cut out about a dozen strips on the bias, about an inch wide, and um, just sewing those together and um, trying to cross my fingers and hope that I have enough so I don't have to do it again. I've never enjoyed doing it for any project that I've done. It's just, ugh, it takes forever. So that's the next step, but I did actually receive a package in the mail that is going to be the next, like, couple phases of this project and I'm really really excited. So what I ordered was actually fabric for the overskirt. So if you remember seeing my concept design, I have a, a grand polonaise poof uh, on the sides. Here's the stomacher and I pulled the orange color from the orange and the flowers because um, I think it's just really pretty and it's a nice contrast. This is what I got. I think it's a perfect match. I think this is a silk crepe. And so this is like a little sneak peek of the ensemble pieces. And I think if you've been watching my Instagram stories a long while ago, I think back in February, I actually bought the fabric that'll make the a petticoat skirt. So that's really exciting. It's been raining pretty much every single day. So even if I did want to take nice photos outside, I can't. So, uh, But there's a day coming up next week where it'll be nice and clear, hopefully. So we're going to try to push that deadline and make it. Otherwise, we're just going to sit inside and watch the rain and keep working on the binding. So, but Let's get back to work and be cozy with our tea and good stuff.